It's a pretty neat segue, actually, because I do want to talk to you about your beloved Richmond. Um, first of all, where does that love come from? Why Richmond? Is it a family thing? It's a family thing. Um, on my mum's side, anyway. Dad goes for Collingwood, but doesn't really oh, wow. like it too much. Um, so, like, everyone in mum's side goes for goes for Richmond. Um, her brother, very, very strong Richmond, I think had the biggest uh, influence of choosing that for me. I think he would have been the uh, the uncle who gets, you know, the Richmond bib or whatever as you, as a child. And mum always took us to games, like, when I was, like, you know, four or five years old. So... Um, and I just love being at the footy. I loved singing the song, which we definitely didn't do a heap because Richmond was so bad for so long. Um, but yeah, just a family thing for the Tigers. Yeah, nice one. That's cool. I'd ask Caden this question, but it's kind of similar for you because as a Richmond fan, you would have experienced pretty much both ends of the spectrum and everything in between. You've, yeah. you've seen it all. Um, what was it like, first of all, as a younger man, supporting Richmond in that pre Hardwick era and like I'm talking like the Terry Wallace and Danny Frawley era if um if I don't think that's too old for you. Um what was that like? Uh did you lose interest at all? Or were you sort of like Caden? Caden was saying he could never turn off the T V even though he uh Melbourne's like down by a hundred points. Are you this sort of same fan? What what was it like going through that? Um Yeah, it was kind of hard, I think, because Richmond didn't have a lot of TV games because they weren't very good. Um, and we yeah. didn't have Foxtel, so, like, I'd be listening to the radio most weeks. Um, so I'd still be, yeah. like, paying attention. Um, and, yeah, the radio was great. Like, because we didn't go to, like, a heap of games every year. Like, we might go to, like, one. Like, we'd go to, like, the opening round and then maybe, like, one, one more, probably North Melbourne, and that's why I hate North Melbourne because they always beat us, like, just. Um <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, the radio was my greatest ally in the war of the Tigers versus the world. So I'd always be able to listen in to all the games that were happening. I, like, I'd just sort of, you know, lock myself in my room and just listen to the game. I'd have my, you know, little plush footy and just kick it around the room. Um, and then I think there was, like, a period of time where I didn't really know what was going on. It might have been, like, 2010 or 11. I don't know, because there's just a lot of ha things happening. Um I don't know why I didn't know what was happening, but I just remember one year I went to a like a NAB game, like a, a NAB Cup game. It was when they had that weird like two halves, uh, like you'd play two people on the one night, so there'd be like three teams going on. And I yes. was like, I don't know any of these players. Like I was, <laughs> I was like, why don't I know any of these players? Probably too too many times listening to the games on the radio, so I couldn't actually see who any of our bloody players were. Um, but yeah, Richo was the best. That's all I can say. <laughs> I love that. Um, wow, yeah. So, because like, like the D's, like you said, the Tigers really struggled there for a little while. And then in, enter Damien Hardwick, probably one of the best coaches in the league uh, in terms of his, probably second behind Clarko in terms of, you know, what he's been able to achieve. T taking Richmond, I remember 2010, I know you said you, you weren't watching as much around then, but that was when Hardwick came in. And that was the year the Eagles uh, won the Spurn, so I'm a big Eagles fan. Yeah. And um, that was when Hardwick took them from... That was supposed to be the worst team in history that year, almost like Gold Coast. And then suddenly, in the second half of the season, I remember Hardwick just took them to being a really good club. Uh, sorry, uh, they, they smashed Maybe West Coast. Maybe like 0-9 or something that year. Correct. Right? Yeah, you're right, 100%. And they, then you belted us by about, I think Jack Rewalt kicked 10 goals. And since then, Hardwick has just absolutely turned that club around, which is ridiculous. What was it like in 2017, going into that grand final? What were your feelings like? Was there a sense of like, I can't believe this is happening? Because 2016 was a really rough year for Richmond as well. I think you missed the, you missed the finals by some way. Um, what was it like for you when you finally got that opportunity? Well, yeah, the three finals prior, like 13, 14, 15, like 13 against Carlton sucked because I hated Carlton. Uh, 14, I drove to Adelaide and that sucked because it was over early. And then wow. 15, I hate North Melbourne. And I was like, surely we don't lose to North Melbourne. And we lost it. And I don't know, like everything, something weird just happened in like all of these games. Like the, the, the Carlton game, like Nick Diagon kicked four goals. Like who would have thought Nick yeah. Diagon would kick four goals in a final? Anyway, um, and then yeah, like 2016, I 
think I went to like 15 games in 2016. I went to a lot of football that year. And I was like, we're not that bad. I was like, we're losing games, but we're not that bad. And so I always had confidence they were going to, you know, come back in 2017. I didn't think we'd win the whole thing. Um, but yeah, grand final day, I remember catching the train in super early, met my friends at the pub, and I was, I was like, we have not thought about losing this game because we're so confident we're going to win. That was my only wow. mindset going into that. I was like, I, I cannot picture a way we don't win this game. Just like from the, pre- the prelim and the first final were more like shockers. And then grand final day, it was probably the, it was probably the quietest I'd ever been at a game. Like I'm normally really loud, really vocal. And in like the third quarter, I think when Kane Lambert kicked the goal to put us like, I don't know, 20 points up, that was in my head. I was like, we've, we've won the game. And I just did not say a word until like 20 minutes into the last quarter when someone else kicked a goal and put us like 46 points up. And I was like, yes, like I just let it all out. Um, so it was just like super awesome. Wow. Yeah, I can relate. I, um, I was lucky enough to be there in 06 when the Eagles won the grand final, but I was 12. But um, for me, it felt like a lifetime until 2018. I was lucky enough to be there as then as well. Um, and I can just remember that overwhelming emotion. For me, I don't, I've don't. i often wondered if the Eagles get back there this year. I, oh, sorry. Let's say maybe next year. It depends what happens with footy this year. But hypothetically, say we get there with Tim Kelly and we, you know, we win by... Uh, 89 points how that would actually feel how i'd contrast that between 2018 whether it would be as special how would you contrast the feelings of 2017 and 2019 was it quite the same or was it just as sweet oh uh 2019 was different because we obviously started the season really poorly so like there was 2017 we were five and zip so it was like we were good early days um true but for me footy in 2019 was like I didn't feel like after a win like during the regular season I was like four points let's go like no real celebrating each win until round 22 when we played the west coast you guys like that was the first game I was like all right this is on like it's on like this is the proof in the pudding we won that game I was so happy I was overjoyed and then I was like, all right, like that was the first, the first final. Then we beat Brisbane the next week. Then we beat Brisbane two weeks later. I flew to the Gabba. That was awesome. Um, and then the prelim was, was probably the grand final, like that I, in my head anyway, of um, how I experienced it was the prelim final where we were, we were gone. Like, we were gone in that game. I don't know how we won that game. We were so bad in the first half. And then the second half, like when we just we came out of the blocks and I was like, oh my god, like it's happening. We're actually not choking this prelim like we did the year before. And <laughs> when we won that game, I I couldn't see a way. Um, or when GWS beat Collingwood the next day, I could not see, have seen a way we lost that grand final. So I I didn't feel as like amazing at the grand final. The other part of the grand final not being as special was because I was doing that AFL video. So I, I wasn't with, you know, like I go with my mum every week. So I wasn't with my mum. And, you know, we're in the corporate, so not everyone's super excited about what's happening, especially if it's not a close game. They're kind of zoned out a little bit. So um, that was sort of my vibe. But that prelim final was so good. That was my, like, grand final moment. Yeah. Oh, it sucked. It's co- like Collingwood. Okay. Collingwood. True. True. Um, the, the, I remember the pregame for that match very, very prominently. It's probably the, the best pregame I've ever been to, which is why I really wanted Collingwood to actually win the prelim last year because I was like, that's going to be the most epic grand final ever. Richmond Collingwood, um, cause I remember the pregame for that it was, it was like a war. Like you'd be, you're in the MCG, 
you know, Collingwood's trying to get their Collingwood chant going around the ground. Richmond are like slamming their thing in reply. It was, and this is 10 minutes before the players have even come out. Like the, wow. the football had not even started. It was so intense. Like it was the most intense vibe I've ever felt at the G. And I was like, someone's going to get knocked out before the siren even starts. Like it was so intense. Um, and then, yeah, like I was, I like didn't really hate it too much because the game was over so early. Like I could, I could deal with that in the second half. Like I was by the end of the game, I'm like, well, you know, we, we fluffed it in the first half. So our second half was shit. And, um, I knew like we had our, you know, players were injured and whatever like, excuses, but, um, yeah, it made 2019 much better. The fact that we actually got there and yeah, the one week at a time was cause I was like, well, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's so just true. a game. It's just a game. It's not a final. It's not the end. It's very true. It's ironic that the year you didn't win the flag was when you finished top with two wins clear at 18 and four, and then you won the flag twice from third. So that just goes to yeah. show it's, it's about what time of the year you turn up. That's it. Well, you're clearly a very passionate Richmond fan.